Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tabernacle Community Church. Glad to have everyone on board. Um, later on, when you have a chance to view this video, remember to uh, share the gospel. Push share share button on there, or like, or whatever, or make a comment, prayer request. All right, and we'll be glad to get with you when we have a chance. Share the gospel, okay? Share it. Don't forget. That's Jesus' commandment to share the gospel, to share the word of God. It's real simple. It's real easy. We're going to be in the book of Luke today. We've got a couple of verses here and there, maybe three verses at the most. But, you know, when the Lord shows us something, we can dwell on one verse for hours, right? But let's get a message across. Today's going to be speaking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The book of Luke verse 11 and 12 Luke 12 11 and 12 verses verses 11 and 12 now when you do Bible studies it will be very good for you to always come before the Lord and um, ask him to help you out you know when you're going to read the verses so you can understand them so you can touch your soul and your spirit and your, and your heart so you can understand it right so it can reveal itself to you and uh ask him for help through the holy ghost that shall teach you within that hour that's what we're going to learn about verses 11 jesus speaking it says and when they bring you into the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers Take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Now, if you've read those verses before, but then don't practice it and don't practice your faith because you need that faith. God has given us that faith. Even if it's a little bit of faith, that's all we need. He never shows you throughout the Word that you need more and more and more to build faith upon faith. No, He just ministers a little faith to every single person. And we, we have that. And we want to use it and practice it and trust in the Lord on what He says. And on these verses, 11 and 12, chapter 12 of book of Luke, he tells us real plain, it's not hard to understand, that when you, when, it's, when the time comes for your tribulation, when the time comes to be tested among others, and they're going to question you about something, or you're going to have a meeting, or they call upon you because there, there was a mishap within the workplace, or there was a mishap or misunderstanding in the church, or some kind of family feud and you start worrying the mind takes over the flesh takes over and you start thinking on oh my gosh what if and what if this happens i'm going to everyone's going to misunderstand um the family's going to be split apart or my um my wife's going to hate me my children's going to hate me or you start thinking all these what ifs and uh, what's going to happen and then people telling you left and right you know doctors probably telling you you know like when you come to the meeting tomorrow when you come see me tomorrow i got some news to tell you and remember god's always in control god has the final say he can work miracles all things can happen through christ right that you believe in trust in him and obey him follow the commandments keep his statutes and his pre precepts stay faithful to him instead of always relying and thinking about what's going to happen in your future we're always thinking what, what what's going to happen in our future we're always trying to work for the future to build and to build and to build and to save and to save in our banks and our 401k plans and our cds in the banks and our stocks and and we put so much energy, so much power, so much time sacrifice upon the things that we care about in this world. Tangible things. 
things that can be lost or stolen any minute, any hour, any day. And for what? Nobody's going to take it with them in the afterlife. Your children won't take it. You won't take it. It can always help you, but only to a time. And it's never promised. These things are never promised. That's why we should invest and spend our time and our power and our strength in the things of God. Things that we can always carry on to the afterlife, our eternal life, which are we are living our eternal life as a child of God as of now. And everything spiritual, everything uh, in the Lord, the things of the Lord, the good things of life from the Lord has been blessed, has come from above, from God, will always be for eternal, for your soul and for others. Other people benefit from you when you get blessed. Other people will benefit out of it. And their families and their children and their neighbors and our enemies. And it just goes on and on and on. So this is some strong stuff. And it says, and when they bring you on, on the, unto the synagogues, churches, church buildings, and uh, magistrates, you know, like uh, the justice of the peace and powers, the government buildings, the, uh, the IRS or the, the courts, municipal courts or whatever it is. It says, don't. Start dwelling on it. Don't start thinking what you're going to say. Don't start writing things down. Oh, I'm going to say this and this. I'm going to touch on this. Trust in the Lord. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. We're Christians. We're Christ-like. We're followers of Jesus Christ. And we trust in the Lord. And we have the faith. We practice in faith. We don't practice on what we've written down and what we think we're going to do tomorrow or this or that. We don't go by an outline. By, by basic protocol for men. It sounds good. Man will always tell you. Schools. I went to a, a, a school that they'll teach you how to do a bank account. And how to run your family life. How to buy things in life. But they never teach you that one important thing. Which is to follow Jesus. To follow what the Holy Ghost impresses you in your heart. In your soul and spirit. In your life. They never teach you nothing spiritual. They just teach you everything what they think is the best thing for them to do. And don't get me wrong. I mean, there are good ideas and everything, but don't put everything and don't lay your whole life upon those things because they will truly not fall and come into pass according to God's plan and purpose because God's plan and purpose for your life is nothing what you think. You cannot think what he has for you what he has in store for you let me give you an example let's go to isaiah the book of isaiah in the old testament isaiah 55 isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. These are very important verses for us Christians, okay? The one you had before, Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Write it down. Study it throughout the week. This is food for the soul. This is learning. This is studying your word of God, okay? And that you can share it with others. It will be real good to always remember these verses, to memorize them if you can, okay? If it's on your heart... Uh, memorize them 55 verse 8 and 9 and uh, we have speaking of the Lord it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts self explanatory again real simple People, some people won't even understand these words. They can't even comprehend it. But it's there. It could be hard to understand, but it's right there in front of you. It says you cannot even measure close to the way God thinks. 
You can't even come close in how he works out things in this life or your life or in the, in the life of others. You can't come to that because God has, he knows everything. He's already seen it before. He knows what is going to come to pass. He knows all angles and all aspects of life. He already knows what's going to happen. That's why this word has been written already uh, from the prophets. When the, when, when the Holy Spirit moved them to write it down and to write prophecy for the future, such as revelations. And, um, and people today, to this day, still can't understand revelations. But like I said, if you really want to know, get into prayer to the Lord. Ask Him that it, was in a, that it will glorify His holy name. That it's not for your own personal purpose. You know, for your own ways. Selfish ways. But it's to glorify the Lord. And you need to know something. Because you want to be able to teach someone. To minister to someone. Or preach the gospel. And you can't preach something that you don't understand. So ask the Lord for that wisdom and for that knowledge and for that uh, revelation through the verses. Because like here on verses 8 and 9, His thoughts and His ways and everything that He does is way above ours. We can't even come close. The heavens are way up there above us and His ways. And we, I mean, we can't even come close to it, like I said. And because... We cannot come close to His ways and thoughts. That's when your faith comes in. That's where you're going to have to have to make a decision in your life. In that hour, in that minute, or where, uh, wherever you're at. You're going to have to make that decision to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 4 and 5. Chapter 3, 4 and 5, it says... Trust in the Lord, right, in all your heart and don't lean into your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He shall direct your path. So that means in everything, in everything you do, whatever decisions you want to make, especially important decisions in your life, in your family, in churches, in your jobs, in your uh, outside, wherever you're, you're at, whatever situation comes across you, whatever circumstance, acknowledge Him. Pray. Sometimes you can fast. If you feel like you need to fast, fast. And meditate upon the Lord. You know, direct your thoughts and meditate upon everything that, you know, you do throughout the day. And meditate upon the Lord. Trusting in Him. Having that faith that He will come and give you an answer. Even if He doesn't give you an answer when you want it. Because like we said, His ways and thoughts are different than ours. The way we think. He's... We're not going to make God do things for us. No, God directs us. He gives us commandments. He gives us statutes and precepts to follow through. He gives us the word of God to read, to study. So we we don't control God. God tells us what to do and, and uh, gives it to us for a reason, to follow for a reason. And this is the wisdom from God. We don't want to follow the wisdom of the world. It won't get you anywhere. It sounds good, but is there's no promise to it. There's no weight on it. God's wisdom is way above man's wisdom. We have the smartest men from the from the oldest times of days that they had all the wisdom in the world and they still ended up in hell. They still ended up not knowing what was left, what was right, what was black, what was white. And God laughs. He laughs at, at man's wisdom. He thinks it's foolish. Because we think we know something, but when we don't know anything, just like he said it in the book of Job, you know, he told Job, he said, what were you at when I built the foundations of the earth? Were you there? Were you watching me? Were you there when the angels sang all together in chorus when he made the heaven and the earth? No. So we don't know what's going on. We don't know what this whole foundation, what everything was built upon. But we can trust in the Lord. We can study this holy word before us. We got an Acts 5.29. If you, if you never read this verse, memorize this verse. Uh, this is the, the actual verse that's right in the middle of the New Testament. You go to the middle of the New Testament, right in half, is Acts 5.29. And we have uh, the apostles saying, We ought to obey God rather than men. 
when there's a choice to make in life, it would really behoove you to always remember you have something right before you, which is God, something that God is saying, and then you have right before you what man is saying. Who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to put your trust in? Me, I will put my trust in the Lord all the time above men. And do not misinterpret the Bible, you know, what it says, you know, about following a man. And you got to put all the verses together. You got to have context. Read the, the chapters before those verses. You think that's what you want to follow. If you read a Bible verse, like I'm giving you this Bible verse, obey God rather than men. Read the chapter before it and the chapter after it. Get the whole context. And then also study the word. Go into other uh, commandments of the Lord. So you can understand what the uh, what they're trying to tell you. What the apostles are trying to teach you. And what Jesus Christ is trying to teach you. In the words of red. The letters in red. You can't just always just grab one verse and that's it. Understand, understand the word. You know, Be wise and read the whole context of it. Study your word. To show yourself approved unto God. So what I wanted to just put everything on today was trusting in the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Put your whole trust in the Lord. Don't lean into don't lean into your own understanding. Don't think about what men have said or doctors or lawyers or all these uh, people, they're always telling you what's going to happen or what they think is best. Go to the Bible. Go to the Word of God. Go to prayer. Ask for help. Ask for revelation and understanding and wisdom. Go to the Lord. Follow God. Trust in, in the Lord Jesus because He has sent you the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost can impress you and show you and teach you what to say and how to say it, when to say it within that hour like he said within that hour that means it's going to be in the last minute in the last hour so don't start fretting don't start worrying stressing out and sweating that's where you go back on faith and trust in the Lord that everything will be okay and if the Lord impresses you to say nothing don't say anything don't do anything but when the Holy Spirit moves you to say something even if it sounds kind of you know simple to you Trust in the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit is moving you to say, to preach, what to teach, how to minister, words of wisdom, of counsel to your loved ones, to your friends, to your family, to your enemies, to your neighbors. And you will be blessed. And the outcome will be bountiful, will be blessed for everyone. Everyone will receive a blessing out of it. Because that's God's plan and purpose for all of us, right? To live in peace to be kind and, and understanding towards each other, doing good to each other, being tender-hearted, forgiving each other, loving each other. That's what God wants for all of us. And to always to share the gospel to each other and to be a witness unto the people and, and to the magistrates and, and to the offices and the governments and the high powers. He always wants to be glorified. So we're here to glorify our Father, our God, and then er everything will come to pass if we trust in Him. And we don't think about what we want to say or what we want to do or, or to bring ourselves up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. And the Lord God always has good promises and good blessings and He keeps His vows at all times and He will not break it. That's all I wanted to share with you today on uh, on the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Um, hide the word of God in your heart. Write them down. Practice them. Meditate on them. Okay? And share it with others. I really appreciate it. And um, great blessings upon you that you can share this gospel and this message to others. All right? Uh, have a blessed day.